as Kenyans limp slowly with great difficulty to enter the year 2024, lingering questions continue to hang over our heads. Indeed, lingering mysteries also continue to hang over the heads of Kenyans. One of these deep mysteries is Raila Amolo Odinga. Because in recent months and in recent weeks, Kenyans have been confused, many have been puzzled, and the big question has always been, what is up with Raila Odinga? Is he tired? Is he going to call another mandamano? Well, yesterday in Siaya County, Raila made a few major pronouncements. He assured Kenyans that he was not going to keep quiet in 2024. There is no way that he will do nothing in the year 2024 in rescuing Kenyans from the very serious situation most in the country are facing as we speak. But to fully grasp what is happening here and maybe perhaps be able to guess what will happen in 2024, we need to dig into this very deeply. Friends, welcome to my last show of the year 2023. Karibu sana. Actually, the best way to summarize this whole thing is as follows. What are Raila Odinga's options in the year 2024? That question, if answered, will be able to bring a lot of clarity going forward. But as usual, let us back up a bit and let us start this story immediately after the August 2022 presidential elections were announced. You know most Kenyans don't realize that something very strange happened after the election results were announced. Because all analysts, all international spy agencies in the country all experts on Kenyans were expecting one thing and one thing alone. They were expecting a violent, angry response from Kenyans, the vast majority of whom had voted for Raila. And it appeared that once again, Raila Odinga's victory had been stolen. And to make matters worse, this time, by a presidential candidate that had less than 3 million genuine votes. And that is according to my assessment. Because I was following that election very closely and on many quarters. And so we must remain with this mystery, which will probably be answered one day, of why did Kenyans just keep quiet? Why is it that the usual very loud supporters of Raila Odinga, who everybody predicted would not take this lying down. Why did they just keep quiet and walk away? That is a very deep mystery. But there were the things which unfolded, which were very important clues to tell us what was really happening. A major power advised its citizens to stay out of Kisumu. That same major power advised its citizens and people who work for organizations linked to it to close work early, to leave for home early on the day that the Supreme Court was announcing its verdict on the presidential petition of Raila Odinga contesting the announcement by Wafula Chebukati that the winner was Ruto. Now let's get this very clearly. That warning came 
before the election results were announced, the presidential election results, and then the warning came again before the Supreme Court pronounced itself concerning the presidential petition. There is only one and one reason alone why these two incidences would make sense. And that is, this major world power already knew what Chabukati was going to announce. Yeah, number one. Number two, they knew in advance what the Supreme Court was going to decide in the petition by Rayla against Ruto's victory. And that tells us a lot. But I'm digressing. Hey, let's stick to today's topic. Immediately after the Supreme Court gave us that verdict that shocked Kenyans, a verdict that included non-legal language like hot air. What does that even mean legally? Because in the legal profession, all we have is evidence that stands up in a court of law and evidence that does not stand up in a court of law. Period. Hakuna nafasi ya hot air. Anyway, Immediately after that, Raila Odinga went on holiday and he remained quiet. This surprised many Kenyans who were eagerly waiting on him to say something. The month of October came and went. Nothing from Raila. The month of November came and went. Nothing from Raila. December and the year 2022 ended and we entered the year 2023. Raila was still quiet. Around March 2023, over six months after the elections, Raila finally made his move with the Mandamanos. But first this kicked off with what they called consultative rallies meetings with the people and many Kenyans heaved a sigh of relief Raila was back yeah and it was only a matter of time before the truth about what really happened in August 2022 would be discovered and then the nightmare would end and indeed, it started looking like Ruto would not last for long, yeah? not longer than a few months. But then, suddenly, <laughs> out of the blue, Raila Odinga and Azimio cancelled an upcoming Mandamano. And this was repeated again after Mandamanos were relaunched. And these demonstrations had really started picking up, yeah, despite the casualties from police bullets. The momentum was good and building up very quickly. Many Kenyans were sure this was all going to end very soon. But then out of the blue came the announcement of the bipartisan talks. And those Kenyans who understand Ruto, knew very well that those talks would go nowhere and those were ordinary Kenyans. Therefore it is safe to assume that Raila Odinga with all his experience must have known those talks were going nowhere. But still Raila and Azmiu pushed forward with those talks at Bomas. There is no denying yeah, that there is a pattern here and this pattern tells us that somehow Raila Odinga's hands must have been tied because this was not the Raila people knew. The Raila people have always known. And now the very latest, yeah, after Kenyans have been waiting for so long for the Mandamano to continue, after the idea of demonstrations and picketing has really picked up amongst Kenyans, yeah, those Kenyans who did not participate 
in the first two seasons of Mandamanos. And some of them were saying that these Mandamanos are disrupting their businesses. These same people now have changed their position. And it seems that there are too many Kenyans just waiting for Mandamanos to resume. But now Raila says very clearly that they're going to follow a different path. Not demonstrations. Okay? Now regulars on this channel will already know that we have said many times on this channel that Mandamanos led by Raila Odinga and Azmio not in the near future. Mm -mm. There is no way they will happen. And we have also said why? Pressure from some very powerful outside forces. Non-Kenyan forces. But Raila is telling us that he will not keep quiet in 2024. He will not stop speaking to the government about the injustices, the corruption, the shortchanging of the Ruta administration against Kenyans. He will definitely do something about that. And he has even gone further and urged his supporters yeah, while addressing Kenyans in Siaya County during a cultural event, Raila told Kenyans to get ready yeah, for action in the year 2024. But we also know that this action will not include Mandamano. So, what is Raila really going to do in the year 2024? What is it is going to do that will have an impact? The desired impact Kenyans want. Yeah, that will end the Ruto presidency. And give the country called Kenya back to its people. Now stick with me to the end. Where I'm going to make a shocking prediction. Yeah, of when the Ruto presidency will end. Because in my opinion, it will end in the year we are about to enter. It will end in the year 2024. Stick with me, I'll give you more details on that. Let's break down the topic properly first. Yeah, so that when I give you that prediction, it will all fit in together and make perfect sense. But first, please allow me a quick reminder. Today is the last day of our tradition yeah, of gifting Chris Kumekucha and boosting this channel. I believe you can see details on your screens right now. We're just going through the last final hours yeah, because it usually ends on 31st December. Once again, I thank so much from the bottom of my heart all those of you who have participated. Those few who have come out with very, very generous contributions as Santeni Sana and also those of us who have sacrificed to give something small, something modest. I also thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Because there's a Swahili saying, Kidogo Kidogo Hujaza Kibaba. Even small contributions count. Yeah, as long as there are many, many people. So thank you so much from the very bottom of my heart and most sincerely. God bless you mightily. And that includes those who will take advantage of these last few hours that we have left in the year 2023. Now, in my opinion, the biggest damage to the Ruto presidency did not come from Ray Laudinga, did not come from Azimio, did not come from anywhere else except from deep inside UDA itself. In other words, the UDA party itself has done the most damage in fighting the Ruto presidency way ahead 
of what Rayland as Mio have achieved. And anybody with a little experience in politics will be able to tell you that UDA, the root of presidency, cannot survive for long. Because, you see, if you see a building and you examine its structures and you see that they are very shaky and you see the building is already wobbling, when there's a small wind, it's like swaying in the wind and this is a building you know very well that it's just a matter of time before this building collapses. That is the situation with UDA. Senator Cheral Gay, an insider in UDA, fighting Kipchumba Mokomen, another insider within UDA. Prime Cabinet Secretary Musalia Mdavadi, fighting with Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. Even as he mostly denies and tries to convince us they are on good terms but we can clearly see they are not there is definitely a problem and then something else many Kenyans may not have noted yet UDA tenderpreneurs fighting each other very viciously for government contracts bottom line a house divided can never stand has never stood right through history. And so, we're asking, what are the options of rail in the year 2024? Option number one, and I really believe this is the option that is going to take. Option number one is to do nothing. Now, of course, rail and Azimu will continue releasing statements, criticizing the Ruta administration, but mostly, they will not take any firm action like major protests, peaceful protests, to end the root of presidency. Like boycotts to end the root of presidency. No. Ryland Azimi will just do mostly nothing. And wait for this shaky building which is already wobbling all over the place to collapse. Option number one is simply a waiting game. And option number two is to mobilize massive protests which do not involve Madamano. Yeah, they could involve boycotts, civil resistance to the root of presidency, etc. etc. That is Rayla's option number two. Madamano, I'm afraid is off the table and I have explained several times on this channel why this is the case yeah but if I were to summarize it massive intense pressure from very powerful people now of course this does not rule out Kenyans getting so fed up that one day they just wake up and hold massive mandamanos right across the country spontaneously which would be a disastrous mess chaos by the way that is a very high likelihood the way things are going in the country you know i've been speaking to business people yeah all over the country and all of them are saying this is a strangest holiday season Christmas and New Year that they have ever experienced and some of them have been in business for over 40 years many of them told me that the orders that they usually get over the festive season for whatever it is they're selling some of them are butchers they get orders for 100 boozies 2 cows etc etc this year 2023 those orders have not come through it has been very quiet for businesses many businesses that usually thrive during this season have been struggling hobbling along not believing their eyes and of course not believing their bank balances folks we have a serious problem a very serious problem and what this means 
is that Kenyans don't have money. And this could easily explode into some very undesirable things happening in our country. Which I know that some of us on this channel are cheering on. Yeah, not fully understanding what it usually involves. And not fully understanding that it does not mean they will not be touched. They will not be harmed. It doesn't mean that. Based on the information I have right now at this very minute. Based on my research. Based on the experience I have in Kenyan politics. My prediction is that the Ruto presidency will not see the end of 2024. Mm -mm. There is no way it will see the end of 2024. And don't forget that there are some crazy things happening worldwide which could easily escalate into major global problems. And I believe they will. And Kenya is not an island. We will definitely be affected. Now that one will make things even worse for the Ruto presidency. Because when you have a global crisis, it really helps for you as a president to have a stable presidency where you're in full control of your country. That is not the case in Kenya at the moment the Ruto presidency. But I'm afraid there's also something else that is not good news. It is important to take note of the fact that even if the Ruto presidency ends today and we get an expert administrator, somebody who knows what they're doing and somebody who knows exactly what they have to do in order to save this ship called Kenya, even if that happens, recovery will take a long time. In other words, getting Kenya out of this hole that the country has been put into by the Ruto presidency is going to be a very uphill task. Very difficult. It could take years. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but those are just the cold facts. Now very quickly before I go, just a quick reminder, last few hours for contributions in our very noble tradition on this channel of gifting me, of boosting this channel that you love, you can see details on your screens right now. And I'm very grateful in advance, Asante Nisana. And Happy New Year 2024. Until next time which will of course be next year, 2024. This is Chris Kumekucha.